saying that Robert Zimmerman invented all his story on my interview last night? Are you saying that his father, who an hour before our interview just now has taken place, was asked directly, is there an estrangement, and said directly, there isn't? Is he lying too? Is everybody apart from you lying? And are you abreast of more information than anybody else in America right well, now? One thing that I notice is that obviously the Zimmerman family is banding together to try to keep George out of jail for the rest of his life. So that's quite obvious what their motivations are to say the things that they're saying. I also noticed that between Robert, George, and the father, there and the attorney, that there are not consistent stories being told. So we're not getting a consistent story that we can wrap our heads around. I mean, we have not heard before that he was actually going to Target instead of on the neighborhood watch. We, you know, I mean, he's sort of reading some of the story from the Orlando Sentinel and making some of the other story up. And I don't understand why it's not clear to you why this is a witness who needs to be treated a little more hostily and pushed back a little bit more and why other people are not rushing to have him on their airwaves because he doesn't know George Zimmerman that well and they haven't spoken about this which also Joe Oliver who you quote has admitted he's not spoken to George Zimmerman about this so how is he telling us things that may or may not have happened that evening when he too has not spoken these individuals are Tore, not spreading a consistent story Tore. they're spreading misinformation and this is not Tore. helping America at an incredibly difficult moment yeah, if I could just point out two things. One, Brian Williams, I think you're aware of him. He's the face of NBC News. Through his Rock Center show, they are trying to get Robert Zimmerman on the show. Are you aware of that? That's not the information that I had 30 minutes ago. Okay. Maybe uh, news has taken over for you. Secondly, you tweeted this. Uh, this was on the uh, 19th of March. New slang, you're Zimmermanning me equals you're killing me. That's a pretty serious, responsible piece of journalism, isn't it, Torin? In the first days and the first weeks of the situation, what many people were doing, what I was trying to do in that, was to pile on and to say, hey, look, this guy is not doing the right thing. This guy has harmed somebody mm -hmm. in our community. Some people misconstrued that, and I'm sorry about that, but this is an incredibly mm -hmm. serious situation. And I understand. But so serious, you felt the, so serious that you felt the need to do stupid jokes. Well, I mean, again, you're Twitter showing that you don't really understand America because what I was trying to do there. No, no, I understand that, America I'm very, know, what I was very to do there well. Is something that Touré. we might call the blues, we might yeah. call black humor, not African American humor, but black humor, mm. dark humor. These are things that are common in America that sort of bluesy laugh to keep from crying. Because once mm. again, another black person who is unarmed and innocent and not mm. doing anything wrong has been killed. And this is incredibly painful and goes back before you were born and before your father was born and before my grandfather was born. So these are things yeah. that hurt as an American very deeply. And you are too mm. new to this situation to fully understand what's really going on here and what's really at stake for America. What a load of fatuous nonsense you speak, Torrey, don't you? You think you have the only right to speak about what's serious in America? You think that I don't have the right as somebody from Britain who spent the last six, seven years here to address a story like this with six the whole years. reserves? You with have the responsibility. The right. yeah. You have the right. I have a, as much right as you do that you don't to have a comment on this. understand what's going on here. Six what don't I understand? What don't I understand? Allows you to speak no, let's, let's, about let's our just most deal with this. And what don't I understand? Please. Please. What don't I understand I, about You are America showing clearly you don't the understand the depth of the pain in the American soul that is at play in this situation. What a load of nonsense. Absolute nonsense. You clearly don't watch my show. You don't have to. No one's forcing you to. If you had watched my show, you'd have seen exactly the seriousness and responsibility that I brought to our coverage in I'm the last week. That you Robert take Zimmerman this case gave lightly. some fascinating new information. I'm not saying you take this case lightly. But there are notes, subtleties, nuances. There is a depth of history within this that you can't possibly understand. Do you believe that George Zimmerman murdered Trayvon Martin? Yes. So you've already tried him? You've convicted him? Well, you, you find him guilty I mean, of murder? I, you asked me what I think. And you I called hear, me? I you called me? You called me an irresponsible in, journalist? I, I hear really? 911 call. That is call. professional. I mean, a journalist professional does not journalism to ignore means that facts. you have just 
Right? I mean, I hear you think you know enough about this, In which George Zimmerman is clearly showing repeatedly racist bias against a person who he does not know and has never seen before and is pouring all these sort of stereotypes into this person. That's even before we get to Coon. They always get away, which is ridiculous because the jails are filled with millions of black men. But he thinks they always get away. He's up to no good. He's got his hands in his pants. He's on drugs. It's a 17-year-old boy walking down the street talking to his girl on the phone. None of those things are true. But he's already said all those things. And then we have the other 911 call, which I imagine will probably be, probably be extraordinarily damaging if we ever get to a court of law, where we hear someone screaming, which clearly sounds like a young boy and not a 200-something pound, 28-year-old man with a gun. A person, however, is screaming, there is a gunshot, and there is no more screaming. That sounds to me pretty damning, and it reminds me of the face of Emmett Till, bashed in, in the coffin, where we see here's evidence of a black body being destroyed wrongfully, innocently, and the justice system, of course, not coming to his aid. Well, I've raised many questions about the justice system, the legal process. Uh, as anyone who's watched the show in the last week knows, what I haven't done is convict George Zimmerman because I haven't seen all the facts yet. You berate me for a lack of professional journalism, but you've just said that you believe he murdered him. You have a very biased, one-sided opinion of this based on your assessment of the limited amount of facts that we have at our disposal. That is your prerogative. I don't challenge you. I simply say that as a fact. You also think it's okay to do stupid, dumb jokes, mocking uh, what did you call it? Zimmermanning me? You're killing me? So, we are different people. I like to think that I'm a professional journalist, Torre. I think that you are something else.